we will work our way through the bonuses of the partnership between planners and celebrants because there's it's a whole it just makes life so much easier you have freedom you have availability and you have control 100%. And they're, the thing, they're all the things that were taken away. You would, the, the control yeah. was taken away, the freedom was taken away, and availability has been taken away. Yeah. Actually, and also that's what stresses everyone out. You know, those are the three yeah. things that makes a bride go from bride to bridezilla. <laughs> you know? yeah. it's, it's when you lose that control, freedom, and, you know, availability that you really start to panic and become, you know, really quite stressed about your wedding. Yeah, exactly. And I've sort of honed in on that over my last sort of few posts to say yeah. the antidote to control is love and if yeah. you go back to what it is that you love then we will find an answer and actually if they love their back garden there is yeah. a way of doing it yeah if they love that venue but actually are there any license to the library which has a beige carpet and brown walls yeah but there's an orangery at the end of the corridor why aren't you having a wedding in there and they're like oh it's not nice 100 percent doesn't matter yeah. um exactly so as a planner when you get approached by couples back in the day the modern planners kind of yeah. are on board with it but it wouldn't necessarily be a question and it's a hurdle i still come up with with venues all the time yeah. they don't say are you having a celebrant or registrar led wedding no they just say they don't registrars they never say, suggest but yeah yeah, yeah. What's your date? The venues are still registrar? very stuck in their ways. Yeah. It's like, what's your date? When have you got the registrar? And it's not that they're yeah. saying you can't have a wedding without a registrar. No. But all, most of the brides haven't been married before, and they don't know that that's actually another leading question. So, you know, in the venues, uh, depends, they, they could say, oh, we haven't told them. We've just asked them when they put the registrar. You're like, actually, it doesn't yeah. matter if they're married or not. They just want to have their wedding. I would say yeah. maybe one, once in every three years, my couples would get married after the wedding. Yeah. But most of, like, 96% will get married before. I much prefer it if they're married before, because otherwise... Oh, really? Like... So they, go, they do you, and then they do registrar or registry office or whatever? I'd say, like, once every three years. My, it's not oh, my really? Preference. I would rather yeah. they got married, I don't know, the week of the wedding. Yeah. Um, some people get married, like they get engaged, and they're like, yeah, especially in the pandemic, they kind of got engaged to be married, yeah. and then they have their wedding. Yeah. Um, but I would say my, if budget isn't an issue, yeah, people quite like, so the, the top end luxury ones I've done, they've had the registrar come in at like the first call yeah. of the day, like 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Do the marriage. They all literally go in, sign the papers, hello, hello. Yeah. She's in like a, you know, Sex and City jumpsuit. Yeah. Um, and then she goes back into the room and then, they, and then we have a later ceremony at like four o'clock. So they've got time yeah. to have a bit of a, you know, bubbly in the room and hang out and be like, oh my God, just on the legals. And they can chill. Then I arrive and we all kind of get, it's just, it's, it's fun. Yeah, it's I've really got one this year where they're doing registry office at 9 a.m., and then hot footing it back to hair and makeup <laughs> for then the celebrant ceremony um, in the afternoon in the gardens at the venue. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, and then, I, I, you know, for that couple, it, it mattered when, what they called their anniversary. That was the thing that made them want to do it both, do both on the same day. Was they're like, right. what well, do we call it? You know, the legals are anniversary or the day that we actually did the wedding party. So we'd rather just do it all on one day because then there's no ambiguity and it is yeah. just that's our anniversary. Um, but I think for for most people, you know, you'd always see the day you actually celebrated your wedding as your wedding anniversary rather than legal. So, you know, I mean, it's like moving house, isn't it? That the day you move into your house is the date you remember. It's not the day that you signed the paperwork in the lawyer's office. You yeah, know? exactly. Same with childbirth. Like, yeah. I have no idea when I registered the children. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, you got in the system on the... Uh, yeah. got the but I you got an ID born. number, babes. Yeah. <laughs> I know when the event happened. Couldn't tell you when I registered it. <laughs> you are now barcoded. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yes, we touched on availability. Sorry, yeah. more about the space. Yeah, but yeah. You can't it in the garden. I did a wedding... 
same thing. They'd gone down together to the registry office first thing in the morning, and then they got the boat upstream because oh, it's in Henley. Oh, and they got the boat up, arrived by river. Yeah. We were like, ooh, and they said, right, see you in a couple of hours. They both went off to their separate rooms and then had a big fat wedding in the garden. I love that. That's really nice. Yeah. Love a boat at a wedding. I'm a very big fan. I about three boat weddings. Oh, they've arrived by boat. I had a lot of punts last year because I do, I do a lot of Oxford weddings. And then, um, yeah. in fact, today, one of my brides sent me a photo of the boat that the dog will be arriving on. And maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'm not telling you which wedding it is, anybody. You're not going to guess. Okay. But when you're at that wedding, you're going to love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, surprised. I'm impressed the dog gets to the entrance. That's amazing. The dog's my wedding important. in March, they've got <laughs> six dogs coming. Oh, that's a lot. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. And I was mm. like, which one's the ring bearer? Should, well, <laughs> we're aiming for Maisie, who's a golden retriever, but it might be the so-and-so, or it might be the so-and-so. And I was like, yeah. okay. And then <laughs> I've done a wedding. There's a lovely hotel in Richmond called the Bingham. Oh, yeah, that's where my one where they're doing the 9 a.m. is. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I love the Bingham. I love Eric's it. the guy that runs it. Um, but they had two Great Danes in the garden who were massive. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we did the ceremony in the garden. But, you know, they've got the plan B inside. And because yeah. I'm not necessarily precious about time, and I've booked my own wedding, unlike the yeah. registrar. So those of you that don't know, yeah. registrar's boss is the superintendent. They then write the rosa and they just tell the registrar, you're due there at then, there at then, and there mm. at then. So there is no flexibility maybe yeah. like 12 minutes <laughs> yeah but some brides are like oh i want to be 15 minutes late it's like well then you won't be married <laughs> yeah exactly you can have the wedding but, e but you won't be married but even the flexibility in setting your ceremony time like i've had this today well actually it was yesterday with um oxford registry office that one of my couples are getting married at blenheim and um at blenheim you've got very strict rules about when you can enter and everything because it's a public property you can only get in once the tourists are basically gone so 5 a.m is our entry point but the only ceremony time they'll give you is 5 p.m <laughs> and so because they've got set times and it's like that at some of the other venues that i work at like you know that those registry office will only go to those venues at these specific times you can have a 12 p.m you can have a 3 30 or a 5 those are your three options and it's like well actually that doesn't always work with the logistics of the day so you know we have to really work around what the registry office are dictating to how we run the day as opposed to how mm. it authentically should run for the couple and the suppliers they choose to have involved in their wedding day yeah exactly i mean it's you've gone to like the trouble of making a relationship work <laughs> yeah Trouble to a proposal, the trouble to investing and planning and visualising and going into, okay, we're going to have a wedding. Yeah. So then you be able to call your own shots. I just, I don't know why people do it to themselves. <laughs> I know. It's really, really, um, you know, it's a, it's a big, and it's not, you know, it's also not cheap. Like, you know, people, you know, will also tell, you know, well, it, it's just cheaper to do it. Well, no, it's not. You know, it's going to cost the same as a celebrant. And going to the registry office to just do the legal paperwork is a lot cheaper than you imagine. So, actually, you're not really saving any money, but you're giving yourself just a great big headache. Um, one, logistically, yeah. but also sentimentally. You know, you're not getting what you want necessarily from a ceremony. Yeah. I mean, the, at the moment, we're having a bit of a kickback because the registrars are saying... Oh, well, we can give you a, a celebrant light ceremony. And you're like, mm. oh, no, 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 no. You know, you're still calling them out of their place of work, calling them out on their nine to, nine to four, calling them out on the weekend, calling them out. To, so they've got to do all that. Plus they bring their, yeah. their witness. You've got to bring your yeah. witness. They bring their witness and the registrar brings their yeah. witness. So you're still paying for all of that. Yeah, and they still say, "Oh, you know, you can choose your own readings," and they're like, "You can to a point." Yeah, as long as there's no religious content. <laughs> there's no religious content, like, yeah. you know, they said, um, especially with COVID. There's yeah, a lot of my couples have have lost people over the last couple yeah. of years, not necessarily through COVID, but as a yeah. byproduct of COVID, like a late diagnosis, or exactly, yeah, a three year waiting list for an operation that's just got pushed and pushed and pushed, yeah. and now it's too late. 
Yeah. And so they're like, oh, can we light a candle? And I was like, yeah, of course you can. Whereas mm. the registrar, they're like, no. Mm -hmm. And so they end up having to, to like just do a, a photo wall, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's not what they want. You yeah. Know? <laughs> they're spending work. tens, if not hundreds of thousands on this day and they can't do what they want which is just so arbitrary you know it's so bizarre it's just so odd you know mm -hmm. it's like buying a house and then being told actually no you can't paint that wall the color you want <laughs> you know like, well no yeah. it's mine i should be able to do this <laughs> yeah but also and like you said about the meetings you know having to do the nine to five go out of your working day to go to all the meetings with the registrar and everything i had one couple that they're actually my wedding in march and they've got a young child um, and they didn't realise, but they took the child to the meeting with them, and they got turned away. And so they then had to go off, they had to book a new date, they had to find childcare for their baby, and then do the whole thing again. And I mean, like, that is, her, you know, they've taken a day off work to do this. It's just horrendous. Yeah. Whereas if they were coming to meet you and organise the service, you're always just going to go, right, let's go with it. You know, we've got the kid here, great. Let, let's still muck in and do this, you know. Exactly. But also yeah. it also affects the wedding morning mm. because it's a legally binding contract you have to mm -hmm. uh, partake soberly responsibly and after the, and after serious thought yeah and you spent 42 grand you've flown people over you've waited two years it's got to the wedding morning the bride for example say it's a bride and groom the bride's yeah. had a couple of campaigns the boys have given you know, the groom, a couple of shots of Dutch courage. They have the meeting, one whiff, and it doesn't happen. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. One whiff. Yeah. And that's 15 minutes before the ceremony. And then you've got to go yeah. out there and say, terribly sorry, there's alcohol on my breath. I can't prove I'm doing this soberly. The registrar's not going to do it. Yeah. Can you imagine? Thankfully, that's never happened at one of my weddings, but... I've had it at church. Yeah. I was singing, and the um, the groom had had one too many, and the vicar was like, it's not happening. Oh, my word. That is petrified. Oh. That is really bad. Did you then step in and say, let's go and stand outside, and let's have a celebrant wedding now? <laughs> I was so tempted. I was so tempted. <laughs> I nearly, um, I was bridesmaid at a lovely venue. Um, and I was, she's not the quickest at getting ready. So <laughs> I was like, come on then, I'll come in the car with you. Because when she's like sent me a thing saying, you know, will you be mine? I got all yeah. excited that I was going to be the celebrant. She's like, bridesmaid. I was like, oh. Oh. oh I have That's a gear shift change. <laughs> I was like, oh, how, how do I not be in charge? So I had to like, just step back and uh, I was like right I'm gonna come in the car with you she's like no no it's fine we're gonna do some photos and the photographer's like yeah no there's a great staircase and I was like but the venue's a drive away no it's fine it's fine we all got there she didn't come she didn't come she didn't come I ended oh. up phoning the photographer and was like where are you and he's like oh we're getting in the car now I've got some great shots and I was like I'm never using Don't you Don't care again. about the shots right now. <laughs> I'm never using you again. And the registrar said to me, if she does not set foot on the property in the next six minutes, I have to go. Yeah. And I was like, could you just register her marriage and I'll take over? Yeah, exactly. And I literally ran outside and went, you have three minutes. And she ran in, they did it. And the registrar was like, I will stay, but you have to cut all your readings and all your vows. Just walk in, sign, and then you're done. Oh, that is so sad. And that's a photographer. She she wasn't wearing a watch. She didn't have a yeah. phone on her. The photographer you trust your supply. You know, that's one thing, you know, that is part of this, you know, is that you build a huge, you know, I, I was thinking about this earlier and, you know, when I knew what we were talking about. And as a planner, one of the things that I'm doing throughout the whole process while working with my couples is curating a team that you trust, like, know. You know, the no like, yeah. trust factor is so important to my couples that they can have a team around them on the day that they really, truly believe, reflect the values and the vision that they have for their big day. And, mm. you know, the one thing we don't have control of, of course, is who's actually the person that says the most words on the day, which is this blinking registrar <laughs> or, you know, whoever it might be that's, you know, <laughs> running it unless you choose to have the celebrant 
where you're choosing another member that fits your team spiel, you know, that, te- you know, that goes along the same lines as the rest of your team. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, the biggest thing that you're doing when you're, you know, you're doing these Zooms the whole time or going and meeting with, you know, I've got one supplier meeting, uh, venue visit with suppliers on Tuesday next week. And I think there's four or five suppliers there as well as the venue plus the couple all doing a walk around for a June wedding you know so it's all about really making sure that you can trust those people that are going to be supporting you to have the wedding of your dreams and if they are the ones that then allow you to fall behind like that that's just awful behavior you know that you need to trust those people because as you say on your wedding day you've got no concept of time absolutely none at all it could be an hour it could be five minutes you have no idea yeah I mean a caveat most that was literally one photographer in hundreds of weddings that I've done. So I don't want yeah. a bad night for photographers. They no longer do weddings, so you're not going to accidentally come across them. <laughs> We're not going to get by mistake. You know he, he just didn't like not being in charge of his time and he decided weddings weren't for him. Yeah. Um, but it was a, oh, oh, it was a bit stressy. Um, that yeah, is so horrible, that story. Your team, including the person that's going to be that awkward third as you're standing there, yeah. be your most vulnerable. Yeah. And there's a lady in a seat with a clipboard. I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> but also, you know, I mean, nobody says as many words on the day as the, ce- you know, the celebrant or whoever's running the ceremony that people listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, in the speeches, I mean, like, we've got 50% of people kind of engaged. Most people are a bit too drunk by that point. Um, you know, but, you know, at that point, everyone's pretty much sober. Everyone's listening to every word. People want to get emotional, you know. The amount yeah. of my couples that like if there isn't if there aren't tears, I'm walking out. You know, like people yeah. want the emotion at that point. Which and... do you think I can give? You know, like celebrants. Celebrants are scriptwriters. Well, I, yeah. I particularly, I, I found out. Which, they were like, oh, there's no shame. There's nothing wrong with it. But I was actually speechless. There were some celebrants that have ghost writers. Oh wow! And okay. I was like, what? Yeah, that really? is shocking. Yeah. And I was like, but that's your job. Mm. You write the script. And yeah. that's, I'm, you know, 20 years in theatre, I was all about the scripts. Yeah. And so it, it didn't even cross my mind that was a thing. And I was like, yeah. You get script writers for your blogs. And they're like, yeah. I didn't know that like, either. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, everything is tailor made for me. I write everything. Yeah. Um, like for today, I've done an order of service. <clears throat> But I CC'd in the photographer and the wedding planner. Because again, with the freedom of a celebrant, their dual heritage, they've got Persian um, and British. So they want to do a trigger ceremony, but they want their mothers to come up, but they still want to do the norm, the norm, you know, bells and rings. Then I've got, I've got like a, another wedding, same month in March, where they're a bit more, I guess, sort of floaty pagan. So they're much more medieval. She's got big trumpet sleeves. Oh, wow. The the father and the son, the father and the groom have swords. And we're going to do a sword exchange because they're going from the protector to the next of kin. Oh, wow. Amazing. And it's only like a moment. So instead of saying, you know, who gives this moment? You're like, who is now the protector? And the husband yeah. is like, yeah. Uh, and wow. So it's just like that <laughs> touch of eccentricity. I just yeah, I love absolutely. I can write it in. Yeah. And it's not like a big, you know, he's not gonna turn up with an owl on his shoulder or a peregrine falcon or anything. Well, you don't think. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, I did say I do know someone who does owl bearing. Yeah. <laughs> in flies a white tawny owl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just to have that flexibility because it's so them. Yeah. You just can't do with a I it's just, it's you know, it's what's like authentic so to them as a couple. And yeah. I think also, you know, the other thing is, you know, where you've said the registrars are saying, oh, we can make it more celebrant led, you know, in our style. Well, you know, yeah, people can write their own vows. That's brilliant. I love that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm never going to criticise that. However, a lot of people have, one, if they've got a planner, certainly, they don't have the time to write their own vows. Or two, they don't have the confidence to write their own vows. And yeah. so they give up and then they just tick a box because it's easier to do that than to figure out what they're going to do for, about the vow situation. And I think, you yeah. know, one thing, even if people do decide to go down the registrar route, which is absolutely personal preference, whatever, but get help to write those vows if you want to, if you can, given it can write your own vows, reach out to a celebrant to help you, you know, because yeah. you can help with them write those, 
those words which you may not you know they may for whatever their reason might be not want to celebrate their ceremony but they should reach out to a celebrant to help them with what will those vows be you know act as okay. you know their their emotional ghostwriter <laughs> in that sense because yeah, you know most people don't language. have the gift of words and language you know that we're not that copywriters yeah i mean i think i guess in coaching they'll call it like power up or power hour but yeah. you know, I have couples that have said, "Oh God, we wish you had you." But blah blah blah. But can you enhance our our wedding in any way? And I was like, yeah. "Yes, you can book a power hour with me, and we'll do exactly. your vows." And then the registrar does all their bit, and then they say, "I believe you want to say something personal to each other," and she'll step back. But as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, you still have to submit it because they can't. Oh yeah, you have to submit it in advance. Yeah, yeah. They can't be seen to be part of anything that is yeah. anything. Religious. Yeah. So it can't be overly romantic as it still it still has to bear weight. Yeah, I think the main well, from my experience, the main thing is they're checking no religious connotations. Um yeah. but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's still a relatively dry process. <laughs> you know, it's it hasn't got the emotion attached to it in quite the same way as where the whole ceremony is bespoke to the couple. Exactly. And it just it makes I've been to registrar ceremonies and they are pleasantly forgettable like you don't object to it you go oh yeah. that was nice and then you know people that have come yeah. to the evening and go well how was the wedding you're like oh, same old same old and it's not awful mm. you should be like well oh, same old same old when actually yeah. you can say oh my god it was amazing they had their kids come up the yeah. dog arrived um exactly. the dad did a speech halfway through because he yeah. just couldn't help himself and especially if you've got that rapport mm. i mean i've got um I've got a banter side of me <laughs> and you know if you get heckled I can heckle back you know in that yeah. kind of banter I've got other couples that are really really shy because yeah. I'm I'm a really good choice for anxiety mm. because, like I said you know the antidote to control is love and yeah. if they feel safe and trust me then they can just love their day more yeah, hundred percent. We've had the rehearsal. We've we've heard the music in the room. She's counted the steps walking up and down. We've had the bridesmaids go. Oh, am I going to sit here? Or am I going to sit here? Because mm. pretty much until the week of the wedding, they're kind of like, oh God, what happens when? How do we know yeah. who's going to do the thumbs up when the music starts? Yeah. And as a planner, you spend like twenty months maybe, and then you just open the doors and be like, good luck. Exactly. Sorry, I don't know this bit. Yeah. And then you just have to let go and be like. Oh. Okay half an hour exactly you I really do feel like it's really unpleasant you know and i think especially you know registrars can be quite headstrong individuals that you know they know each venue and they know the people that work in each venue and they don't want a planner messing with what they know and so yeah. I find that very often, you know, you just have to stand back and let for, the, for it to go as seamlessly as possible. You just have to stand back as a planner and let the venue and the registrar work their magic to make yeah. sure the register, you know, make sure the ceremony goes according to plan. So it really is, you know, for half an hour of the day where you have spent, as you say, months, if not years working on this timeline and every single tiny moment of the day, I know exactly what will be happen for half an hour. I've lost control. You know, and I don't know what's going to happen in that half hour. And you don't know who it is that's running the ceremony. You know, there's been somewhere, there's been some jokes made by, you know, a bit of banter by the registrar, and it's just not appropriate for that couple. And it falls completely flat. And you're just sat there kind of watching, but you've got no right to get involved in any way. And afterwards, if the couple aren't happy, you can't get involved either because, you know, there's no there's no relationship for me and the yeah. you know I can make contact with the registrar office about logistical things but the registrar on the day is very much in control of what's going on and they will decide what is and isn't going to happen I also had one last year which was a horrible situation where the registrar was late um my couple were on time and it was when we were it was one of my very first weddings after lockdown um so we were still very regulated and you know and there's yeah. there's still quite a bit of ambiguity about you know what venue could do what you know and like what spacing had to... a drink. yeah yeah and there was so many kind of 
Um, you know, there, there was just so much ambiguity, you know, and I think there was a lot of interpretation as to what was and wasn't allowed. And this was in a very kind of strict building. So we've gone very much, you know, everyone had that we had a seating plan for the ceremony. Every household was sat, you know, with meters apart and things like that. And then um, the the celebrant arrived, uh, sorry, the registrar arrived late. One of them arrived on time. The second one arrived late or on time but as we know they have to arrive early because they take so long to set up um they have to then feel comfortable that they have to do their checks that all the covid um, measures have been put into place and then they go in to have their meetings because of that i had the bride pacing um because it was in a public space it wasn't somewhere i could put her in a room um pacing outside with her dad and the bridesmaids for about 15 minutes they then came in but this venue that they had the ceremony and they'd only booked for two hours so it was meant to be half you know two, an hour of prep or no no it was meant to be sorry two hours post prep so it was half an hour of ceremony and then they were going to have an hour and a half of drinks and canapes sat down still in their seats in this venue which they paid mm -hmm. through the nose for but because the celebrant was late the ho oh, sorry the registrar was late the whole ceremony ran late and then they couldn't get through all of the canapes and drinks that they'd ordered through the caterers in that amount of time and they had to leave because there was another event going into that space in the afternoon oh my goodness and so they wrote to the registry office and said look we were really upset with the way that everything was dealt with and they just got a we don't care back you know there was absolutely no apology there was no repercussions for it nothing and I couldn't step in because I had no they wouldn't have me as a you know as part of that relationship it was very much directly between the couple and um the yeah. registry office and it was just awful you know watching these poor you know this poor couple spend all this money and then just have to walk away from what it was meant to be oh it's such a shame it's so borough dependent I mean the it Guildford, is. the Guildford ladies and there's a there's a chap there as well they are lovely yeah I love girls they're so nice there's other ones like Richmond at Bingham, they're a bit more tricky. Um, but actually, the Guildford ones are so nice. When I've done um, when I've done weddings where, particularly if it's dual heritage, um, yeah. so it's uh, Irish Catholic one side, just agnostic the other yeah. side. But the family, are like, what do you mean you're not having a big fat church wedding in Ireland? Yeah. <laughs> um, but the the compromise is well, have a register, have um, a celebrant who can. Mm -hmm. You know, Granny Pitt can do a prayer. Yeah, you know, makes you can sense. Like a pan granddad, and if you want a Bible reading, you can because I'm not humanist. I'm an independent celebrant. Yeah, you can make space for faith, but yeah. for the Catholic family, it was very important they got married at their wedding. Yeah. So I just um, called Guildford Registry Office, and I was like, "This is the situation. How?" And because I used to run a venue, I know they know what they're doing. I know the venue yeah. knows they're doing and I know what I need to do yeah but I'm happy to take the lead because I know I'm happy to do w work around them because I know I can always make it work because I've got yeah. that confidence and that um experience so I phoned the registrars and said what would you prefer as I understand it you can come in first do your bit then introduce me or I can have our, the wedding everyone goes out to canapes and they sneak off and do you or we can leave it two hours apart and keep them so socially separate and they were just yeah. so that I'd engaged in conversation yeah like actually we prefer to kick off get things started and then we'll introduce you and hand over and be on our way yeah. and I was like perfect lovely so I arrived with the registrars we all said hellos they got set up I said I'm gonna go check on the bride now if that's all right they're like sure sure and I was like do you want me in the room or do you want me behind so they're like oh it's fine we'll just introduce you when we're ready so sometimes it does work I don't want to be like it's all doom and gloom no sometimes it does work but when it doesn't work you have nothing to stand on no, you don't. So it's you just don't. A risk that I wouldn't recommend taking, really. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I think it's it's really kind of, you know, it, well, it's what we were saying before. You know, it's scary that you know you've got control of everything else on this big day except the bit that's mm. actually what the whole day's about. You know, yeah. <laughs> the actual marriage. You know, exactly. the only objective is to have a wedding ceremony. Everything else is a byproduct of that. And mm -hmm. that's the one part of the day you, you know, if you choose to go down the non-celebrant route, um, you've lost all control of. Yeah. And also, and I don't think people really realise this, because it's a legal declaration within society, mm. it is not a private event. No, that's so, true. Yeah. 
you have to keep the doors open even yeah. though you've hired the venue mm. oh it's an exclusive right it's not if yeah. ex-boyfriend wants to come in and says i need to be there i've got to object in they come yeah it's not exclusive it's not private no I, but you get that in church. i get that in churches a lot more where you know random people just walk into the ceremony and i used kind of to watch weddings all the time things. i was one of those I just used to wander in and sit Weird. back. <laughs> I think because I bell ring and I sing, I knew I was yeah. like I'd be ringing, ringing the wedding out. So like I rang, yeah. you know, we rang the millennium in. That's a weird hobby to have. But when you're a teenager, it pays the bills and it pays quite well. Um, so I was <laughs> bell ringer. But I just used to sit in and think, oh, I don't want to just wait till the end of the wedding to ring them out. I want to go and sit and watch yeah. the wedding. And then when they turn Well, that around, makes a bit more sense than just taking an hour out of your day if you're just walking past. That was a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just like, ooh, I can hear a wedding. No. Yeah. Did spot a wedding car and follow it. No. <laughs> Literally, people do that. I even they had one person walk into a church wedding, one of my church weddings last year, and came in and there were loads of like there was all the orders of service by the door because it hadn't started yet. Um and some tissues and some face masks that have been laid out ready for the um groomsmen to hand out. And this person just came in and started like filling their bag with all of these bits. I'm like, Mom, oh, those are the guests. Can you stop? Oh, <laughs> Don't mean to be rude, but those are our tissues. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, it's a public building. It is, yeah, hundred percent. You, you, you can't stop. Whereas so I really sort of again trying to get that message across, like actually if you have a celebrant led wedding it is exclusive yeah. it is private you can shut the door 100 percent. yeah and they're like oh i haven't thought of that and i was like yeah <laughs> I was one of the people who used to walk in and sit at the back <laughs> <laughs> you can't have the celebrant because then literally i'd be like and who are you yeah <laughs> no you can't get out <laughs> have a pat yeah. butcher moment <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Or like um, in Ghost, get off my train. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically, for, you know, anyone listening or catching up, I started with, you know, a celebrant led wedding gives you freedom, availability, and control. Yeah. And I think, Constance, you hear that, feel it, agree with it, fly that flag. Yeah. Um, 100%. And I think it's, you know, and I think one of the biggest things is also that you know, really making, you know, something that I really want is for all of my couples to feel that their wedding is bespoke, unique, and totally immersive into their world. And something that, you know, allows that and facilitates that is having a celebrant, um, which, you know, really is kind of on brand as to whatever your wedding mm -hmm. is. Um, and I think, you know, it's very, you know, it's a str it's potluck, if you know if you go down the registry office route um if yeah. somebody is aligned to your vision um yeah. and it's it's kind of you know it's quite restrictive if you go down the church route um but obviously yeah. i think if you do go down either of those routes it's also a good idea to bring in as much of your own personality as those functions will facilitate and at those points mm -hmm. you know those power hours with you could be really useful yeah yeah no well keep us in mind definitely yeah i Thank think there's, listening. there's so you many opportunities yeah there's so many opportunities there's so many more venues there you don't even need yeah. to go to a wedding venue exactly I mean, I do quite a lot of, obviously being in surrey and south london there's lots of lovely private gardens there's mm -hmm. rivers, there's marquees there's like um unsanctified chapels and things yeah which are Thing. um and a million golf clubs but it sort of depends <laughs> you know <laughs> you are in the heart of golf club country aren't you <laughs> yeah. but it just I, I guess what i'm saying is again as a venue as a planner mm. you can widen your brief because you don't have 100%. to if yeah. they're quite eccentric you're like oh there's this really quirky venue it's not licensed but we can work around that yada 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 yeah exactly Something like the asylum in, you know, South London is just brilliant. You know, it's just I don't it's want to perfect. Do a there. <clears throat> I so want to do a wedding there. It's really the wedding no, I did have got cancelled and they decided uh, to emigrate. And you're like, oh damn it. That is annoying. Well, it's a great space, you know, I you know, um Anne and Nichols 
uh, wedding planner, she had a great wedding there with Stuart the Celebrant. And it was just beautiful. You know, it was so gorgeous. So, um, yeah, I think there's some, you know, there are some really unique spaces. And also anything can become your chapel, you know, <laughs> the theatre yeah. or, you know, as you can do it anywhere. The bowling alley, whatever is you, you know, yeah. be creative, have fun. Don't feel that you have to tick a box during your ceremony. Make it really authentic to who you two are as a couple. Yeah, exactly. Or we could do like we did on that beautiful shoot you did where really? we are throwing you know that little bit of extra like the the candle ceremony not so good in a windy day no. but... the windiest day we've ever had i feel that was <laughs> but look how much my hair's grown since then it, was less than it has ago. It's Crazy. In length, i would say i know <laughs> but i mean like it was so because it was that boho lux yeah. you had the the seating and the deck and the rugs that's just such a nice vibe i was like where's the guests let's do this yeah I mean they were a very young couple I would have felt slightly inappropriate actually marrying them but as models <laughs> they were beautiful <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. but, but yeah you've got the lake there. behind you you're surrounded by fields there wasn't a building in sight you know it's so gorgeous there and um, that's tip-top venues for anybody that's looking yeah. kind of just outside Milton Keynes area in Buckinghamshire um you know and it's just beautiful absolutely gorgeous I've got a wedding there actually this summer and you know it's just brilliant because it's complete flexibility to just make it your own all there is is a teepee and a lake and then the rest is up to you and some loose and the rest is up to you you know you make yeah. it however you want it to be it's brilliant yeah and go check out your style sheet for inspiration yeah exactly. yeah Not right sure. well thank it's you so so much thank you for having me <laughs> you're welcome i loved your lockdown lives last year oh uh, you know anyway right lots of love if lots you've got of any love. questions thank folks you. Um, you can be found on Mrs. T Weddings on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. I'm guessing your website is Mrs. T Weddings dot com. com. Yeah. Mrs. T Weddings dot com and Instagram is Mrs. underscore T underscore Weddings. Lovely.